Welcome back to Skipper. Today, we have four must-add players for your fantasy baseball teams. We're looking at three decently rostered players and one little deep ad who is going to be playing a lot of game at Coors Field because he is a Colorado Rocky. This video, once again, sponsored by FanDuel Canada. If you're in Canada, betting on baseball, FanDuel Canada is the best place to do it. I enjoy, you know, sometimes I got to be on my phone. I can't be at my house. You can watch all the games in the app as long as you have money in your account. Let's get into these four must-add players. First one, Dalton Varsho of my Toronto Blue Jays. He is 40% rostered and outfielder uh, so far this season. A 218 average. He does have four home runs. He's driven in eight. One stolen base, but his weighted runs created plus is sitting at 122. Dalton Varsho has gotten hot and has hit four home runs over his last five games, including one off a of left-hander, something he hasn't done since September of 2022. Varsho is one of the best defenders in baseball, and last year he had the characteristics of what you would think is a great home run hitter, but it just wasn't the case. Varsho was top 10 in both fly ball percentage and pull percentage, and obviously pulling fly balls is the best way for you to launch home runs. The problem last year was he was also in the top of the league for infield fly ball percentage, something that he was at the top of to begin this season as well. Dalton Varsho went through multiple swing ch changes last season, uh, seemed lost at the plate, and he hit 27 home runs the year before. He salvaged his average against left-handers thanks to his ability to bunt. Uh, the platoon splits would have been really, really bad for him against left-handers without all those bunt hits. And we saw a strong spring from Dalton Varsho. The counting stats were good, as well as the process. Uh, and then Dalton Varsho struggled to start the year, and everyone who thought Dalton Varsho was going to be good, he just went back to his ways. I know a bunch of people dropped him as well. But the last two weeks show you the special skill set that he has. 177 weighted runs created plus the last two weeks, an OPS of 971, an ISO of 382, uh, and still only a 227 batting average on balls in play, which makes sense because uh, home runs don't count positively towards your BABIP. Nice little change for Dalton has been his ability to hit four seam fastballs. Last year, he had a 224 average against four seamers and a 438 slug. This year, so far, small sample, obviously, but a 375 average and a slug of 1036. Dalton Varsho is running a great chase rate, and I fear he is starting to put things together. If you remember, he started the season hitting in the cleanup spot, and although that is gone to Justin Turner, I think there is plenty of playing time for him in the five hole. We can get those RBIs up, and I think he's going to steal a ton more bases as well. Way too good of a base dealer to only have one at this point in the season. The second player we are going to go to is Ahmed Rosario of the Rays. Infielder, outfielder, 28% rostered. So far this season, a 39 average. Two home runs, 10 driven in, one stolen base. His way to runs created plus is 159. Ahmed Rosario signed a one-year, $1.5 million deal with the Rays. And as soon as he put pen to paper, everyone thought it was going to be a steal. And those early returns are great. Ahmed Rosario has shown us that he's a 280 guy. 10 home run pop, 20 stolen base upside in the big leagues. He's done it before. And I think what hurt him last season was Ahmed Rosario dealing with a ton of injuries and then trying to play through it when he finally gets acquired by the Dodgers. He had a back injury and he also had a knee injury last season, leading to one of his worst in the big leagues. Rosario is running great whiffs and strikeout percentages early on uh, and is ready a third of the way to his barrels from last season. Ahmed Rosario has a career zone contact percentage of 86.5%, and to this point of the season, it is sitting at 92.1%, and is running an overall contact rate about eight points higher than his career averages. His average exit velocity isn't off the chart. He's going to hit for more average than he is for power, so don't be uh, taken aback by those numbers at all. If you're in an OBP league, this is not a priority ad, as he has a 4.5% career rock rate. Walk rate, oh, they got a lot of me there. And he's running a 1.6% rate in 2024. Ahmed Rosario has 10 hits in his last five games, including two home runs and a triple. If we tap into some more power here, this is a really good fancy asset uh, that you can pick up off the wire. The third player we have is Kirby Yates of the Texas Rangers. He is 33% rostered. So far on the season, he is 2-0. Hasn't given up an earned run. He has two saves, 10 strikeouts, and eight and two-third innings pitch. Let's just cut to the chase as to why you want Kirby Yates. He looks to have taken over as the undisputed closer uh, in that Rangers bullpen, which is great when they are a great team. You think they're going to win a lot of games. Uh, you don't have a good closer because you drafted a shitty one and you're worried about picking someone up off the wire. This is why he's a must-add guy. Jose Leclerc has taken himself out of consideration for the ninth inning role, and a nice nugget from Andy Barons is that in each of his last four appearances, Kirby Yates has recorded the final outs for the Texas Rangers, earning a win and two saves. Kirby Yates has a season with 40 saves before, and that was 2019 with the Padres. <laughs> not that recently, but 
Um, as someone who's d- been able to do a 40 save season, I don't think that's the upside for Kirby Yates, but 20 is definitely uh, in his cards. He's currently over the 90th percentile in chase percentage, whiff percentage, strikeout rate, expected batting average, and expected ERA. He's gotten to be strictly a four-seam and splitter guy. The four-seam velo isn't fantastic, but the splitter hasn't given up a hit all season. So if you need some closer help, Kirby Yates should be available on your wire. And lastly, we'll go to a deep league uh, ad for this week. Brenton Doyle of the Rockies, 11% rostered, uh, 286 average, three home runs, seven driven in, one stolen base, and waiver runs created, plus of 108. I saw Brenton Doyle hit what I thought was the furthest home run I had seen in person in Toronto last Friday. That was right before I saw Giancarlo Stanton, uh, what he did to Eric Swanson on Wednesday. First of all, the Rockies are heading into a nine-game homestand at Coors Field. Brent Doyle produced a 16 home run, 23 steal season between AAA and the majors. And when I pitch a guy like Brenton Doyle, he's 11% rostered, but if he wasn't a Rocky, he'd be around like three or 4% rostered, I would think. So we still have to temper some expectations. This isn't an awesome, awesome pickup, but he is in a favorable position for the next 10 days. They're gonna face the Mariners, Padres, and Astros, which you think are good pitching staffs, but we know what can happen in Coors Field. Doyle is crushing fastballs at this point, a 500 slug, whiffing less overall. Uh, there's upside to his skill set. He can hit for some power, and he can run very well. I think he's a deep sleeper for the next week, and I'll be taking a flyer on Brenton Doyle. Thank you, everyone, for watching Skippers, and thank you to FanDuel Canada. Let me know who you guys are picking up this week, and I will see you 